how is a person who clearly has a need for a lawyer supposed to decide which lawyer they're going to engage um, if they don't know any attorneys, if they're not a lawyer, if they don't have connections to that world? Uh, those people are, are left to, to make their decision based on the information that's available. Unfortunately, most of the information that's available is just straight marketing material. Um, you watch TV and you see the commercials. Those are lawyer commercials. They're, they're not informative. They're not helping the consumer in any sort of way. They're just jumping up and down saying, hey, hire me. This is what I can do for you. But they're doing it through a dollar amount. They're not explaining the process, explaining the differences in cases, uh, or explaining the strategies that they can use to, to actually get a good recovery for their client. Uh, you go online and you look at Google reviews. Well, Google reviews, as you all know, come in one of two flavors, one star and five star for the most part. Uh, one star indicates that somebody was not happy. Five star means someone was probably trying to be nice. Um, you know, and again, these are little clips. They're, you know, a few sentences about this law firm that again, don't provide any information to the client, the potential client, uh, as to how they should go about making their decision. You look at the lawyer's website. Again, more than likely than not, this is going to be just straight marketing material. There may be some legal content on there. We have some good content on our site, and the purpose of it is is to try to educate uh, people to the issues and things they need to be thinking about as they move forward. Uh, but the normal consumer is just fed a ton of marketing. And it doesn't help anyone. My practice in the last 10 years has been on both sides of the V is what we call it. And what that means is I've represented people, uh, people who were injured due to no fault of their own, whether it be a, a slip fall, a car wreck, a truck wreck, a, a construction accident, a, a shooting due to negligent security, medical malpractice, nursing home abuse, or in some cases, uh, you know, we're staff members at a nursing home have actually beat on patients. Uh, we've represented those people and their families. And at the same time, we've represented insurance companies, uh, the persons who defend those cases more often than not in this area. It, it's, it's us. It's me. Um, and we represent both the, the, the corporate entities, the, the individual nurses, doctors, so on and so forth, and in some cases, the insurance companies. And we've done this for over a decade at this point. And I feel that it gives us a, a very unique perspective uh, concerning the issues that a person's going to face when they bring one of these types of cases. Um, and my hope is to shed some light through these, I guess they're podcast videos, uh, upon those issues so that people can get some information to try to make a decision off of uh, that, that's not just straight marketing material, uh, because that's the purpose of this. It's not to market to you. Uh, it's, to, it's to educate you. So hopefully uh, it'll be well received. So where does the problem start? Uh, my personal opinion, the problem started when attorneys were allowed to advertise. Uh, prior to 1977, lawyers were not allowed to just openly advertise their services. 1977, there was a U.S. Supreme Court case uh, that said that this advertisement is uh, commercial speech, therefore it's protected under the First Amendment. Flash forward, you've got lawyers dancing on top of 18-wheelers uh, throwing $100 bills. Uh, I'm not sure how that's really protected speech, but uh, I'm not on the Supreme Court either. This marketing phenomenon has set up an absolute race to the bottom. Uh, initially, you would have lawyers that would just put up, you know, classy billboards, um, you know, classy advertisements. But let's be honest, trash sells. Um, you know, the more hundred dollar bills you can throw out, uh, the more noise you can make, the more people that come and, and sign up with you. Uh, I've I've seen this in practices. Uh, these, these mass plaintiff's PI firms that employ dozens, if not hundreds of lawyers, uh, more often than not have suspect advertising. They use slogans like, you know, size matters saying, Hey, we've got a lot more attorneys. It matters. Or, you know, just call us once, or 
we've got strong arms or 1-800, whatever it may be, or they'll have a, a catchy jingle of some sort. That's the hook. That's the hook they're using to pull in the, these consumers who have absolutely no idea what they're doing. Um, it's as if, you know, they've blindfolded a sheep and, and they're leading them down the, down the way saying, hey, don't worry, I'm going to help you all the while, not explaining to them how they're going to help them or what they're going to go through. And it can become predatory. Uh, there is a firm right now, I use the term firm loosely because I'm not really sure what they are. Um, and I'm going to use their name because they're, I don't think they're a law firm, so I can say their name, uh, Mighty Law. You know, Mighty Law's entire marketing platform is that billboard, billboard lawyers are taking advantage of you. Uh, trust us instead. And they, they have a lower fee, and they, you know, they, they have a, a unique marketing aspect. They give you, you know, some sort of client's bill of rights, so on and so forth. And they're, they're really pushing this lower fee, trying to attack these mass uh, plaintiff's personal injury firms. And they're calling these personal injury firms predatory. At the same time, Mighty Law is doing the exact same thing, <laughs> just under a different marketing scheme. Uh, it, 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 it's all marketing. I would encourage you or anyone listening um, to put the marketing aside not, not pay attention to it. I mean, sure, you see marketing, you get a list of names and a list of firms to consider, but that you do some sort of independent research on those firms, that you actually sit down and interview some of those lawyers, make them interview for you, uh, that you talk to them about their fee structures and, and what they're going to do and how they're going to go about um, improving your case, not just settling your case, but improving your case. Um, and if the, the law firm's not willing to do that or they're not willing to sit down and listen to you and, and address all your concerns, then maybe you should look somewhere else. Attorneys are businessmen. Just like any other business, uh, the, the object, one of the objects at least, is to make money. So you have these large marketing firms that are spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, in local markets, that's not statewide. I'm talking about in South Georgia. Uh, they're spending millions of dollars. The purpose of that is is to get as many cases as they can into the door. And then the purpose is to process those cases as cheaply as possible with the minimum number of lawyers that they need and then produce a result that the client will accept, not necessarily will live with. Uh, you have attorneys at these mass firms with hundreds of cases uh, assigned to them personally, whether it be 100 or 200. Uh, 200 is not unheard of to be assigned to one attorney. There is no possible way that an attorney can do justice to 100 cases. Absolutely not. In fact, the American Bar Association has a recommended number of cases of about 50 per attorney. The reason they have that is because people know you cannot give your best effort to 100 people at the same time or 200 people at the same time. There are only so many hours a day. There are so many conscious hours of, of a week that you can actually work. Um, if, if you want to know what that's like, come catch me on a Friday. This is a Monday morning. By Friday afternoon, I'm usually mumbling. Um, it just is what it is. I had a client list last Friday that I literally had to stop and apologize to her and tell her, hey, you know, my son's been wrestling this week. I've not gotten to bed till 12, 1230 for the last three nights. I usually get eight hours of sleep. Now I'm working on four. I didn't want her to think I was hungover. Um, you know, there's only so many hours in a, in a week that you can actually work. And these firms, these large firms, it's just a money-making thing. They're pushing through as many as they can in any one given time. Uh, so don't give in to the, to the marketing. Don't be persuaded by that. Actually get some information before you move forward.